Um, so the name of this guy uh, was Natale, and in our dialect, the name is Talin, Ronzana. And uh, this guy owned uh, an incredible vineyard um, in Le Coste, South Region, which is nearby um, Giuseppe Rinaldi Winery, which is this powerful plot like that. So uh, he got in touch with my dad and said, well, I'm getting older. My son uh, absolutely uh, wants to move to Turin to do something different. Um, well, if you are interested, just to help me not to, you know, switch up uh, from on to off, from one day to another, I'd be very happy to support you, to help you farming the veneer. Uh, but anyway, just to make sure that you want to take care of, uh, of my property. So, well, my dad thought this was a very interesting deal. And they said, uh, yeah, we're quite busy, so some, sometimes, once in a while, I come to supervise what you're doing. And all the time when my uh, dad was going there, he was um, noticing that was a, a barn misbehaving. And he started blaming this guy because uh, he had the impression that all the time when he was uh, arriving at that point, he was forgetting about his single apartment. And uh, Tarin, you know, broke up one. I'm joking, of course. He's, uh, he was saying, but I really don't know. You know, I always part this vineyard the way my parents taught me. Uh, and probably, you know, there are some humidity, there's some water into the soil. So that's why the vine is behaving this way. But my dad never believed you know, to his words. So it happened that. Um, uh, a few years later, when I was uh, 89, my uncle Luca was uh, finishing at the Enological School in Alba, and uh, at that time was uh, six years instead of five years of school. So they were talking so much about genetic, uh, and also the first professors from uh, University of Turin were coming to Alba in order to start talking about. Uh, so Luca came back home and said, maybe, you know, it could be interesting to have uh, those guys in the veneer in order to help us to understand what type of wine he is. Because my, my, my dad and also my uncle knew precisely anyway. Their perception was, their skin sensation was that it was on the old. But we weren't so much sure. So, in the end, they came and this professor, woman, uh, Anna Schneider, uh, ampelographer, uh, she said that Luciano, you know, I can only confirm your sensations. The problem is that right now we don't have uh, tools, instruments, uh, knowledge of for uh, studying the DNA for wines, not yet, and absolutely for the bureau, not for the bureau. So the only thing you can do is try to grab this vine or the other vines away, bring away this vine from the original plot because maybe, you know, the um, neighbor's vines are also disturbing this one, or maybe there are bacteria in the soil. So my dad did, and of course it took so much time, at least 10, 12 years, in order to get some crop. Uh, we wanted to, uh, to craft the vines inside and not into a uh, nursery place um, or with some nursery plant classify this uh, kind of uh, job anyway. Uh, because uh, once you give uh, something to somebody else, you never know what comes back. So it took a while because some of them, of course, also pass away. Uh, we had different vintages in terms of quality. Plus, you know, Luca and I were so busy also building the new facility at that time, but my dad never lost attention uh, with his wine. So it was uh, every vintage uh, trying to pull out some uh, know-how that he got from the Jacobo Borgonio, the fashion to vinify the wine in a very, very traditional way, like Daniela Scranda. Um, so we cast longer macerations uh, and see what was coming out. Because my dad understood that it was so much in need of different pairs. So at the end, uh, in 2015, my dad got a very uh, particular heart surgery, 
and uh, the spring after the morning time we bottom the bottle, he imposed to look at myself to bottle this wine. And we said, uh, how can we bottle this wine? We don't know what type of variety it is. And uh, he said, doesn't matter, we're going to keep this wine for the family and try to work uh, approximately you know, a thousand bottles. He said, uh, okay. They want that, why not? Anyway, it's not a disgusting wine, it's going to be enjoyed so happily. Um, and, uh, and also because prior vintages were just uh, so involved, because we also weren't authorized to drink this wine without knowing the type of variety. Then in 2017, Luca got to uh, anyway, join a seminar where the professor was talking, uh, Professor Snyder. And at the end of the seminar, they, they got together and she remembered what uh, she came, what she did for us in a way. She asked Luca, what happened to your wine? And Luca said, you know, still there, and when we see you making the wine, we still do not uh, know anything about. And she said, if you want, I can send some of my uh, wheels anyway, you know, uh, colleagues, in order to help you to discover what it is. Right now, we can also do the DNA especially for the viola. So they came and after two weeks we got uh, a response. Uh, unfortunately, a very um, sad document anyway. It's black and white. It's like, like your blood test when you go to the viola. I expect to get uh, a seal, you know. Uh, it's something very special. You know, a very cheap uh, uh, response, but doesn't matter. <laughs> the most important is what is written on is that this is a new clone of the viola, something that you know we got the uh, goosebumps uh, because of course it's a confirmation for us. Uh, we knew, but you know when you see something testing that, uh, it's a great satisfaction. So uh, the clone right now um, is just uh, under a, a long code name uh, because. Uh, uh, this wine is uh, so in a particular way because it is affected by six virus, which are part of the DNA. So it's uh, also kind of mutation because the nebula is very sensitive to mutation, as we care is also a type of mutation at the end. So um, that's why we couldn't bring this wine away from the site as well because it's not certified. What we are trying right now to do is to cure this vine and to remove or to move away these uh, six virus. So Alessia is working right now at the University in Trento, uh, curing the vines. Uh, University in Turin is uh, absolutely doing the same in order to put together the two studies and see if they are achieving the same result. Uh, before leaving, uh, Alessia actually was at home for two weeks and she brought me uh, you know, a little proof of this vine growing in a, in a glass jar, in a way. As uh, she understood that uh, up to 44 weeks, I'm sorry, four weeks, the vines uh, continue to behave normal. And then after four weeks, it is going to change. So the, um, the experiment that we want to do is that once uh, it is certified, it's going to make the same type of uh, grapes and so the same type of wine. Uh, for us, it uh, doesn't, doesn't matter anyway, as we're going to keep making the wine absolutely uh, with the same grape varietals. It's right now it's certified. And uh, we, we were the first one bringing this uh, clone into the lab. Uh, but probably we are not going to be uh, the only one using this non for making our wines because uh, unfortunately, you know, we uh, got some vines pruned and also uh, some bunches of grapes. Uh, as probably somebody else understood that something was going on in that vineyard, so they came. Uh, but anyway, they went into the vineyard, but it doesn't matter. No, the important thing is that uh, we were the first one doing that. Something that we never thought was possible nowadays to discover some, um, you know, special expression, and uh, with uh, 
science anyway, and with genetic right now, we really can trace and everything, which is fantastic. And we wanted to pay tribute to the uh, former owner, and to call this wine Tallinn. Uh, I mean, that's uh, the nickname of the former owner. And Vita in Italian it means vine. So it's uh, really the, the singular expression of a single vine. Um, so that's why I want you to keep uh, uh, our other Barolo uh, in order to compare the difference. So first, this guy is a six year old compared, uh, you know, which wine you have kept anyway, 10 years or four years, you know, but you immediately understand that you are on a different sort of planet or dimension in terms of uh, consistency and. Um, Anyway, the, the, the texture of this wine is, um, is very, very special anyway, very, very tight. Of course, it's still quite young. He does uh, three years in off, uh, three years in bottle before the release in time, as uh, we also went back to the traditional um, uh 50 hectoliters, and then in one year in Toronto, and then one year in 25 hectoliters uh, over as well. And then we will see what Yeah. That's the story of the The no beans. How old uh, do you know the original vine? Do you know the it was already CCC. Now we, we really can know everything in a way. And uh, at that time, was already C approximately 60 years old. 60. C C C C so, uh, and uh, it's really getting, getting old, the original one. And uh, the other one is uh, uh, 20. So what are the individual characteristics that you'll see on the vine and in the wine? Mm. Is that um, the, the branches and the berries? Anyway, for example, the berries are, uh, you know, one point, one point, one two grams each. Uh, in uh, talking about the normal the Kyoto, two point two. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if you can see from this picture anyway, this is a, the normal viola, as you can see also the shape of the lean. And this is the vitalin, mola, and also loss. So there's so much articulation. And then every, I mean, somehow every berry is a different size in a way. This is absolutely more regular and more complex. So that's the virus doing that. See, the virus you're is trying uh, to take confusing. Out, see, you're going to change the normal. And see, you see yes. without virus, it's going to go. You know, yeah. exactly. But we don't mind. This is just because uh, my daughter is uh, studying my house, so it would be interesting to do that. Uh, but we are not. We don't have it. We're going to continue to make the wine absolutely uh, with natural things. And then what is uh, interesting is also the beads, where actually the tallin is absolutely thicker, and also it is a poor on the top, so almost impossible to get attacked by vine disease. And in fact, you really don't need to it's crazy. No, it's, uh, it's crazy. And also, the, this is a high resolution picture, so you will see how the, the normal one is more like a human skin with cells. It's not sauce anyway. The other one is just one piece. Yeah. And um, yeah, absolutely less juice, more concentration. And luckily, anyway, Vita uh, Berlin approached the ripeness more or less the same time as uh, the other Barolo for Nebula, which is uh, Nebula for yeah. yeah. Which is good as uh, normally during the springtime. It has really own function and vegetation. Yeah. So all the berries are all different sizes. Mm. So still ferment the whole the whole bunch. Yeah. Or the the they all bunch, but without the stem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We always we all the stem have to. I mean, check for very the oil and so on. Absolutely. Also because the oil uh, was not. From a different way to prepare other grape varieties. The first getting ready in terms of ripeness are the berries and then the stems. That's why 
Also, eight years ago, we wanted to change or to update our different machines, be able to run the berries without breaking absolutely distance because we don't need to get green uh, tannins or greenish anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, this is